Hello! The title of this video is called Mammon. Now I'm in between of keeping my eye on my son and making this video so I may have to pause it in order to check on him. But I, I really wanted to get in depth about what I believe Mammon is and as many of my friends and you all know I am uh, currently writing a book called You Cannot Serve God and Mammon. And the whole point of it is is to show what believers are caught up in regarding uh, the world and um, the, you know the love of money. And Jesus got into that in Matthew chapter 6 where he got into talking about wealth and how um, believers would tend to treasure the things on earth. And he, he told them that they needed to not treasure anything on earth because that is where their heart is. And um, so he said at the conclusion of that, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God, and in some translations it's mammon, and in others it's money. Now, I believe mammon really encompasses everything in this world that believers would tend to put above God. And that has to do with, I don't know, clothing... Uh, cars, uh, money's included, and anything um, that they would love. And the real test of that is if uh, what they own faces tragedy, uh, faces disaster, floods, fires, or anything. How would they react after? Number one, if they love God, then they're not going to react from that. They're going to say, like Job, they're going to be like, uh, God gives and God takes away, the Lord be praised. Or if they're focusing on mammon, then their reaction is going to be devastated. So it, Jesus really gives a warning out there for fellow believers not to follow this world, not to love the world. And um, it's so very easy for believers to get caught up in uh, loving this world and so, one second, let me check on my son. So, I'm back. Uh, I'm just checking on my son. And he's going where he should not be. He's over with his little friends. I don't know if you can see him. So, i got to call him back home. Or it looks like he's already heading back here. But if he goes far away, i got to call him back. And uh, so, hold up. Let me check on him. One second. Okay, I'm back. So I checked on him. He's cute. He's hanging out there with his friends. And uh, the next door neighbor, her kids are out there too. So she's out there watching them as well. So we're good until I got to check on him again or he comes up to the door. But like I said, uh, believers, um, they know what scripture says regarding mammon. But I don't know if... I, Possibly a glaze comes over their eyes when they read Jesus' words or they read it just to read their quota per day and they really don't delve into it. Now, um, I was at that place to where, you know, I read Jesus' words when I was in my 20s and I guess it glazed over. I had no idea what he meant. But until I surrendered my life to Christ and you know, surrendered the, the big thing, surrendered my will, my choices, um, what I do daily, asking the Lord, you know, what I do about this or what do I do about that, that's the difference. So once I, I started doing that, that's when I really, things started changing for me. That's when my eyes opened up to what Jesus had said about serving, you know, God or mammon. And what was I serving before then? I was serving mammon. You know, when you follow the financial rules of the successful, then you are getting into that place of serving mammon. And a lot of people may not like that, but I'm sorry. I mean, if you're if you have the tendency of worrying about where you're how you're gonna pay bills or worrying about how you're going to eat, then you're falling into the trap of mammon. You're, following in, you're falling into the trap of worry. 
And that is in the, I guess you would say, confines of mammon. Now, if you're following God and you're trusting God wholeheartedly, then you're not going to want to pursue anything that you know is against what Jesus had said. You know, and that entails, uh, you know, like I said, following money. But if you love God, you're going to want to do what God wants you to do. And so Mammon, when I was looking on Google one day, I was looking at different pictures of Mammon that came up. Now, Mammon is different things in different cultures. I was reading that he's... Um, the Syrian god of wealth, and he goes by the name Plutus, or a, a different variant spelling of it. Um, who knows what it is in any other culture or the name. But I, I looked on the different pictures, and it had different demon-looking pictures of it, and how different people were bowing down to Mammon. And so, I believe Mammon started, or the love of Mammon rather, started in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve disobeyed God's words and took the fruit from the tree. And so from that moment on, independence from God came. Man then toiled in his job. And so, since he toiled in his job, um... Maybe down the road he was looking to get paid for whatever his sweat, you know, caused. You know, maybe he sold crops or whatever it is in order to benefit from it. And maybe that's when, you know, finances started. So therefore, um, the more money they got, the more, hmm, I want more of this. So therefore... They strive even more and they toil even more in their jobs, and, you know, reaching into the ground and, you know, making a living that the, the love of money started coming. So with the, the love of money, um, perhaps one person as they toiled became very successful in you know, they're toiling and increased in a lot of money. So therefore, they became rich. So therefore, they tell other people around them, this is how I do it, and this is what you can do to do it. And so therefore, the, the rich person then becomes the ideal man. And if you have seen my other videos, I may have spoken about the ideal man. Now, I define the ideal man as somebody that is rich, somebody that gives tidbits on how to become like them. I, in today's world, it could be Donald Trump or Bill Gates or, you know, the late Steve Jobs. And, and it's because they have made what this world considered financial choices that were smart. And so, now the enemy has blinded um, the people of the world with wealth. And so the enemy uses mammon, the, 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 the demon, those various demons in order to blind believers and people of the world to engage in getting more money, to increase in wealth, to focus on money. And that's, the, that's what mammon's job is, is to get people wrapped up in money, um, becoming successful and things like that. So, unfortunately, this has dipped into the church. A believer would come to Jesus, give their life to Jesus, but then still maintain the, the worldly way of living. And that is the problem I have with the church nowadays, is that none of them seek God. They still maintain the flesh. And it says that in Romans, that all have turned aside, each but have become a corrupt. No one seeks God. And so, believers even maintain that independence from God to this day. And I, I truly believe that a believer needs to see this, 
They need to see how deep they have come into this world and how deep they have gotten lost into the uh, the mindsets of the world and wealth and how much they, they love money. And when they can see that, that's when their eyes can open to where they are. Are they really living for God? Are they desiring on a daily basis to do what God wants them to do? And like I said, that's my biggest problem with the church nowadays is that no one asks God, what do I do? What do you want me to do today, Lord? And in other videos I had specified that, that believers say, why ask God? You know, God's given us the freedom of choice to be able to do what we will. But, you know, if you've given your life to God, I have not seen the early church. Sorry, I had to check on my son again. Um, I don't know really where I left off. I can't go back and check. But, um, like I said, there is a, a difference between um, when believers follow mammon. When, when they follow mammon, then... They are walking in the pattern that everyone in the world, you know, walks in. They, they start adopting and believing everything that the world says. Um, they hold only to their jobs. They don't believe that they can get help outside of their jobs. They're the ones that are the main breadwinners. Um, so there is no help outside of themselves. Sorry, my son called me again. So believers uh, that adopt the, the world's ways of thinking, they start thinking like the world, they start behaving like the world, and that entails uh, a lack of mercy for those that are, are not financially successful. There is judgment on those that are not, and even on those that are homeless. And that is so far away from the compassion and the love that Jesus wants us believers to have for the less fortunate. And if you don't believe me, I suggest that you look in the Bible for yourself so you can see God's position. And one example of that is when, uh, in the Old Testament, I think it was the book of Leviticus, maybe, I don't know, chapter 20, but God gave an uh uh, a command that the people that own vineyards are not to pick up, you know, what was dropped. Leave it for the poor. So God had compassion on the poor at that time. And he does so today. And any believer that, you know, puts the, 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 the shackles on other people of the world that are not financially successful, then... They, they are not walking in the compassion and the love that they should. Uh, so you may ask, you know, what, what do you do if you are financially successful and a Christian? Well, you got to realize that your wealth comes from God. Your strength comes from God. Your ability to be able to go to your job every day comes from Him. So if you walk in that pride thinking that you're the one that, is the provider and the main breadwinner, then you must realize that God can take away your strength. So, believers need to see just how, like I said, far away they have come from Jesus' words. How much they and the world are alike. So how can we be lights in this world if we're doing exactly what the world does? If we behave exactly the way the world does. And I know in my journal God told me that um, the darker the world gets, the brighter the lights in a, us will become. And the, the sad thing is, is that Jesus said that in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. So how much of that is the church? Now, if you truly believe as a Christian that... To walk in a lack of compassion for somebody that is not financially successful or the poor and you believe that you can snub your nose up at them and not help them out, then you must realize that 
you are walking in the exact example of the goats that uh, Jesus gave in his parable of the sheep and the goats because they did not have compassion on anyone that was hungry or anyone that was in prison. So I would suggest that you go and look at that scripture and see if you're walking in line of that. So hopefully in this video you got the idea of basically what mammon is. I'm sorry if I've gotten off track because I'm keeping my eye on my boy. But um, I want you to see exactly what mammon believes. And th that belief is to become financially successful. If mammon can get believers off that and onto their finances, then he's accomplished um, his job. So you have to see the tactic of the enemy if you are a Christian. Realize what you have taken in. Realize how much of the world that you have taken in. How much of the world that you love. And you have to forsake it. You have to repent. And once again, give your life to Christ. Give your will to Christ. And let Him be the one to make your decisions. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned.